Hello, mass concentration stoichiometry. Now, stoichiom st oh, no. stoichiometric. <laughs> I've got my tongue tied around that. Stoichiometric calculations that involve solids and solutions require the use of two formulas to calculate moles. Previously, when we did mass mass stoichiometry. We only needed to use the one formula to get our substances into moles. But now we're going to have to use that same formula when we're dealing with the solids. But we also have to use the formula for moles, N equals C on V, for the solution component of the reaction. So the formula we're using, these two are on our information sheet. Now I recognize that uh, both of them can be rearranged, but this one is rearranged into the form for moles, which is what we're most interested in, uh, in terms of the stoichiometry. Because whatever we're given, we have to get it into moles so we can use the molar ratio, and then get it out of moles into masses or um, volumes, dependent on the equation. So there are four steps. And first one is to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction, identifying the known, the given substance, and the unknown, the required quantities of substance. Calculate the number of moles of the known quantity of substance present. From the equation, find the molar ratio that states the proportion of known to unknown quantities in the reaction, and use it to calculate the number of moles of the required substance, and calculate the quantity of the required substance, be that in a mass or a volume. And so that's exactly the same as what we were doing in mass mass uh, stoichiometry. Okay, so not, nothing is different, we're just using a different formula because we're presented with different uh, data. And this is an example of it. We'll do a couple of examples, or one, we'll see. Hydrofluoric acid etches glass. It's very corrosive, and it does. And quartz, according to the reaction, so there's our quartz, which is our glass, SiO2. There's our hydrofluoric. The end product is sulfur trifluoride, which is a gas, and water. And we've got the ratio 1, 4, 1, 2. Now, what are we given? A quartz sculpture has 500, a 500 milliliter container of 22.5 moles per liter hydrochloric acid. What mass of quartz would be etched if the sculpture used all this acid? So there's our known. Our known is the acid, and our unknown is how much quartz is going to be etched by it. So we've written the formula, we've identified our known and our unknown. Calculate the number of moles of the known substance. And so we've got a concentration, we've got a volume, but we must remember to convert it to liters. And so we actually have 11.3 moles of HF, hydrofluoric acid. We then use our molar ratio. And our molar ratio is one is to four, silica is to hydro. Um, hydrofluoric acid, so 1 is to 4, and we need to just, that means that we, uh, what are we doing, what are we doing, we've worked out how much acid we need, so the number of moles of the uh, silica dioxide, or the quartz, is going to be a quarter of the hydrofluoric moles. So another way, let's just go back here. That's right. Now, if the way I would actually do it is, I think, or the way my brain thinks about it is, if we have the ratio 1 is to 4, and we know that uh, what we have is 11.25 moles of the hydrofluoric, that's uh, hydrofluoric, and this is the SiO2. It means that 1 is to 4, as this number is to what? Well, 1 is a quarter of this, and so we really need 11.25 divided by this guy here, 4. And so we would get 2.81 
is to 11.25 and that would be our answer which we've got here that's just the way I hope my brain works through fractions but you can look at this this is more the mathematically way inclined way of doing it either way as long as you get the right answer is fa fabulous right let's move on and so step four is now that we've got the moles of silica dioxide or, or the quartz we calculate the quantity so the mass so we're going to use m equals n times capital m this is our moles this is our molar mass for silica dioxide and that results in re the amount of silica dioxide that's actually going to be etched away is 123 grams now why might you not want to know that well you might be etching a container that only weighs 200 grams and so this is way too much acid to etch it because you wouldn't be left with much um, of the container so now the four steps of stoichiometry is now this is the super 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 simplified version of it write the equation if you're not given it get your known into moles use the molar ratio from the equation convert the moles of the unknown into what you need and that's the end of it okay so write the equation get your known into moles use the molar ratio from the equation to work out the moles of your unknown and then convert the moles of the unknown into whatever you need um, using the formula that gives it to you. let's have a look at another example a piece of aluminium is placed in a beaker containing 500 milliliters of uh, sulfuric acid and hydrogen gas is evolved generated bubbles off given the initial mass of the aluminium is 15.14 grams and its final mass is 9.74 grams calculate the concentration of the acid so this is a little bit trickier and we've included this one in just because it is a little bit trickier step one of course now you're not given the um, formula so you're actually going to have to work it out and you'd recognize or hopefully you'd recognize that this is an this is a metal and an acid reaction and as a, as a metal acid reaction you're going to get a salt plus hydrogen gas given off you're told the hydrogen gas but you actually had to also work out the salt and you had to make sure you get the correct formula for this and if you didn't get the correct formula everything would be out and the rest of the question would be wrong so you have to be very very careful and once we balance it it's recognized that the ratio is 2, 3, 1, 6 but our known is this and our unknown is this we've identified them and we've got a ratio of 2 is to 3 now determine the mass of aluminium that was represented in the reaction now you're given two masses this is the before mass this is the after mass so we need to subtract them and the actual amount of mass undergoing this reaction getting dissolved is 5.4 grams and we convert that into moles by dividing by the atomic mass of aluminium and we get 0.2 moles that's step two now what's step three step three is we then use the molar ratio three is to two and again if I was to go back we have our ratio two is to three and so two is to three if I was to write this my way I'd have 2 is to 3 as now what is it 0.2 moles is to now what 2 is to 3 basically this is um, a, a half bigger than this isn't it or it's three like uh, three halves hmm, that's one way of looking at it so basically what we need to recognize is our our unknown is going to be 0 0.2 times by 3 but divided by 2 so we want to get it three times it but we also want to divide it by 2 because it's going to be half as big as this and that's how we get it to be half as big All right. One uh, another way of thinking at it is 0.2 times by one and a half, 
which is 0 0.2 times by 1.5. That's probably a better way of thinking about it um, because this is one and a half times bigger than this. And that would give us the answer of 0 0.2 is to 0.3. Yep. And now that's step three done. So we've used the molar ratio, we worked out how many moles we need of it and step four is now to work out the concentration of the acid and we're given the amount of acid and we rearrange C equals N on V we've got the N, we've got the V and therefore the concentration is 0.6 mole and that's how you do that one now there's a couple of reactions here for you to have a go at doing and that gives you a bit of practice. There's also a lot at the end of the chapter when we come to the very end. So you'll get a lot of practice at doing these and practice makes perfect. In the next video we're going to talk about and learn how to do acid-based titrations. See you!